this uh, this old small uh, five-speed little drill press that I've had for probably eight or nine years now, and I don't use it. So I am going to use uh, the motor head and uh, bearing uh, area here, this this motorized head. To, as the basis to build uh, an inexpensive blade. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is strip this down to the basic elements that we require. Uh, all we actually need out of this is the motor and head itself, chuck, and this bottom ring here with about uh, two to three inches of this tube. So we'll We'll strip it down. Incidentally, throughout this, um, the, these videos of making this, uh, there's going to be a, a lot of high speed uh, footage because otherwise um, it will take me 10 videos to put this together. So here we go. Okay, so there's, what we need to do now is to uh, find out how much, um, how much of this tube we want left on here. Because we're going to use this to attach to our main body of our, of our new lathe. Okay. It's looking like uh, 50 minutes, 2 inches there, so I'm going to allow another Another half inch, so I'm going to say oh, 16 now. You can cut this, it's quite thin pipe. As you can see, it's about ooh, a 32nd of an inch. Uh, not much bigger than an exhaust pipe, actually, thickness. Uh, but it's ground steel. You can actually cut this with a hacksaw. Uh, I'm going to use my motorized hacksaw, but any of the tasks that you see uh, me doing throughout this. You can, you can actually do with um, uh, a very, very small, cheap, inexpensive uh, table saw or a router, um, cheap run-of-the-mill router as well. Um, just for quickness for me, um, I'll be using machinery that I've got here in my, my workshop. But uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, so this is ready to now get the burr off that's left there because otherwise you won't get it in the won't get the tube in the hole there. Eh? Nice fit. Um, what I want to do is I want to leave there's three screws in here, or three screw holes, bolt holes then. I want to uh, actually leave to this side parallel to the motor and one over this side. So we'll just nip it up for now. Uh, so we have our motorized unit now. Um, we're also going to lock this up. This is the um, this is like the key for the for the for the um, the quill. Um, so if I lock this up tight it means it locks the quill like up from uh, coming in and out. So it, with this unit, we have all the elements that we require. Uh, we've got an on-off switch, um, place to mount it. We have a chuck, we've got a motor, and we've got our five speeds. So basically, we're, um, we've got most of the turning part, or the motorized part, is pretty well complete. Okay, so now we need to jam this up. To make sure the quill stays put. So you do slacken this off, this is a lock nut, and then you tighten this down. <clears throat> Tight as you can go. And then tighten that down and roll this over. And these two little adjustment nuts just um, Adjust them up so they just 
just nip firm and that will hold all this back up in there and it'll it'll never come loose, it'll never undo. So that's that. So pretty well, that's it. End of the uh, end of the job for the headstock. Okay, so I've made myself a, a little bit of a cutting a preliminary cutting list uh, that's going to make up the main body of our bed. Um, I don't want it too. I don't want the, the bed to be too long because I want to be able to put it onto a bench and, and, and clamp it there or screw it there and move it around from place to place and use it. Um, wherever I want around the shop. So I want it to be a portable small lathe. So I've decided that the, the, the bed length um, that I require needs to be about um, about 600 long which is um, about two foot long. So um, I'll set my fence up now on my table saw and um, start cutting some paths. You can see now we've got our basic uh, shape starting to form um, out of just these uh, cut parts of uh, this, this by the way is uh, marine ply it's very stable uh, but you could use ordinary ply I'm just using this because I've, I've got it and it's very smooth and um, I, I think it would be a very stable material to make it out of. Um, I'm going to put this together with a combination of um, uh, using a, a, a Craig pocket hole uh, system uh, to connect these two uprights to the base. I shall be using that in conjunction with glue and I shall also be gluing and screwing uh, the two top sections uh, onto the uprights and even the two top sections together as well. So we'll, we'll do that right now. jig holes in and what I've also done is I've, I've uh, cut a filler block to go in between these two because they go together something like this okay just to give it a very firm backbone and then these two pieces are going to be screwed and screwed and laid up and put on here like so which basically gives um, our bed. I've also got another piece of uh, 4x2 here, very good 4x2. They're going to cut to fill the remaining area here. But uh, I need to get it all nice and square, so I've assembled it uh, with this one, uh, this upright in here, and I've put a, a, a clamp on here, clamping the, the base to the, my bench. And also this spacer, so I know that uh, that is the exact position that that upright needs to be in relation to the spacer block and the uh, the one the other side, the upright the other side. So we shall glue and screw. Cordless drill goes in.
so we've got uh, our uh, bed with a well, dovetail here uh, and chassis we've, we've got all that built and we've got a, a multi head or um, headstock mount uh, already made uh, now we're going to um, make it look a little bit prettier so mark it all out so I have a net line of where everything is and I'm just going to uh, nip off some of the areas we don't need um, but I don't want to take too much of the strength out of this plate so I'll just take it out through take it through. oh I'm also going to allow for the uh, in drawer of, of cooling air for the, the motor too that's going to be up against this face plate so I'm going to have to uh, take a small area out there for we'll that. We'll do this sort of business I think just that sort of business just a bit of a snaky movement just to uh, allow for the air intake for the, for the motor Um, an unusual grouping of uh, screws um, to solidly make this to our uh, um, chassis here or frame. I, I take the drill so far in and if you've ever sort of drilled a hole in hard material you'll find that it starts to bind and you can't push it in any further uh, too, too well anyway it's because the the, the uh, material builds up into the drill and starts binding inside the hole and I have had cases where the drill has just snapped off in there so I pull it out clean it out, and then drill the rest of the way. Some of you might uh, have already just picked this but I had to take the corner of this off because uh, the shield or the cowling at the rear of the motor was actually just touching here so I took the corner off so we'll offer it up now and Make sure everything is still all right. See if it works. Um, wonderful. And it's fairly quiet as well, which is uh, which is pretty good. So there's a a run round so far. I think it's really starting to look the part. Just give a few shots there. Okay, that, uh, that has actually turned out exactly what I had in my mind. Um, now, I'm trying to build this for less than $150. Uh, this is a, to me, old um, little drill press. 
which if you bought brand new you can get for $98 but it's I've had this for five six seven years uh, so if it was second hand it would be less than $50 um, a sheet of the marine ply foam board uh, less than $20 a couple of dollars worth of screws and glue um, so as far as we go now um, you can probably probably regard this for around about a hundred dollars so far um, and this is going to be end of uh, part one of video one of building this because I'd like to try and show you everything so you can replicate it and build it yourself um, so part two and I should be able to get this in two videos um, I'm going to build the uh, saddle, a movable saddle that goes on here, and tool rest uh, so we can cut our wood, and um, the tail stock with uh, 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 an adjustable quill. Um, so that'll be in the next video. Um, if you've liked this video, please click, uh, select like or uh, alternatively you could subscribe to my channel and if you press the little red box down there that will take you directly to my youtube channel uh, where you will see um, shop jobs like this uh, i do a fair bit of wood turning which is how this has come about so people are asking me or telling me that uh, they would like to be able to do this but they find the lathe rather expensive to, to purchase well, you can build your own with simple hand tools really and sun tools. Until next time, um, we get completion of this. It's bye for now.